All right, guys, so I basically got my timeline here. Everything's ready to go. So what I did was I just dragged on one of my clips here, and here is the clip that I'm going to use. Again, I'll use DaVinci Resolve A gamut uh, with M log LC, whatever, I forgot. Let me show you, I'm just gonna basically show you what I got going. And the reason why I chose this is because this is what they recommended on on the actual MC Pro's PDF uh, guide. So here it says wide gamut, a wide gamut, which is the one I chose, is the first gamut of the technical series. It is as close as possible to the famous gamut of Aria Alexa wide gamut. Most of the Hollywood movies use Aria Alexa wide gamut cameras, and they got their own gamut. So I'm using this one here, and then it says here, when interpreting, for example, in Black Magic Resolve, it is recommended to use uh, from Aria Alexa, which also comes free with the free version of DaVinci Resolve, D65 white point, good match gamma curve, M log C. So I chose the M log C with the A wide gamut. That is a combination I chose because, come on guys, area, uh, area is just the best, right? All right, so let me go ahead and close that. So here it is. This is what our area log C gamut looks like here. I'm going to jump over to the color page, and this is how I'm going to just do a basic color grade on it. Not color grade, just basically correction of the of the log profile to rec 709 so what i first what i typically do is here you can see i before my shots or before i start speaking into my shots i show this color chip card here which is white 50 percent gray and then black and i use this to help me set my white levels and my black levels and to set the white balance so first thing i do is drag on a color space transform i drop that on here again i was using i'm just going to go area wide gamut three um, and then from there i'm rec 709 I'm going to just go down and press R. There's Rec 709. And boom, we got that set up. Use timeline outspace. My timeline outspace is already set up to uh, Rec 709. Click on your color wheel. You go to color management. And then here is right here. Rec 709 is my timeline space and output source. So that's why I don't need to do those two on the bottom. And um, I noticed the thing too, if you scroll down here to this apply forward OOF or OFTF, if you unclick it, you notice it's kind of bright. Sometimes it's checked or if it's not checked, but you could check it and get a little bit more contrast back in there. So that's what I typically do. So let me switch first of all my scope over to my waveform. I want to see my waveform. There we go. And also, okay, good. Now, from here, we can see that it's still not ready. To, it doesn't look anything presentable. So what I'm going to do, Alt S, add another node in here. I'm going to take the area Alexa rec to rec 709. Boom, there it is. I'm gonna drag that on there. Okay, boom, now we're in Rec 709 color space. We're pretty much ready to go. This is it. Let me go ahead and close this effect. We don't need that. Now, pay attention here. I got my color transform space here, and then we got the LUT here at the end. So I wanna press Alt S again. This is gonna be my correction node. I'm just gonna put in here, this is gonna be my balance, because I'm gonna just balance it out. So now you can see here, it's a lot of green. We got a lot of green in this shot. And let me even go down into here and see if we can go to colorize, right? Uh, where is it? There we go. We can see this has got this aqua, aqua green going on, right? I wanna correct that because that's not right. Okay, so let's do my balance here. Um, I'm gonna basically actually do balance and I'm gonna go Alt S and do one more. And then this one's going to be uh, the white balance. And I'm just gonna tab here and go, let's just basically get that green tint out here. So first I'm gonna go and click on my eyedropper and I'm gonna drop that onto the white, boom. There we go. Now that corrected a lot of that, took a lot of that aqua out of there. And we're looking pretty close to here, right? We're, let me go ahead and close these windows, make that bigger. We're looking pretty close here. Now I'm going to put this on a, on, a, on a hero frame, basically a frame other than those chips. Okay, that's looking pretty good right there, right? <laughs> now, what I want to do is go back to my balance one here, and I'm just going to add in a little bit more contrast. We can see here, but it's, it's really lifted up a lot and it's, you know, it's sitting up pretty high. So what I'm going to typically do here, I'm just going to drop in a, a little bit of a, a, boop, a marker there. And I'm just going to pull that down, get some contrast in there, right? Add one back here at the top and just bring that back at a slight S curve going on here, which we know we do in, in Lightroom and all that. Just get my S curve going a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to press alt, I mean, control D before and after. Just added a little bit of punch. I can still see a little bit of that aqua creeping in here, especially along around my head and then this back wall. This back wall is not really aqua, but my kitchen has a green tint because of the tile. But I want to I want to take that out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my white balance back onto this node here. And I'm going to go to my color. And we're going to go to make sure printer light hotkeys is checked. 
I'm going to go full printer lights. And this is going to take all these colors here. We got red, green, blue, crayon, magenta, and yellow. I want to take out a little bit of green, right? And on my number pad here, I got my number pad ready to go. So if it's looks green, eight and five, basically plus a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to pull a little bit of that green out. Let's go one, maybe one more. Okay, good. And now opposite, since I took out a green, I want to add what's opposite of green is more like purple. If you look here, we got green and then goes into purple. So let's see as far as printer lights again, what do we have? We can probably do magenta. I'm going to add in just a, maybe a tab of magenta. Let's go two. It says two for magenta. All right. And actually, no, I don't like that. Look at that up here. Look at that. It just brought that in. I'm going to go, uh, what was it, to negative. Two was to bring it in. I think zero might be negative. Let me check again. Uh, magenta, yes, negative is zero. I'm going to actually pull that back out. That brought in a little bit of dirt. So actually, we may just end up leaving it like this here. Let me see. Before, wow, check that out. After, before, after. Now you can really see how aqua it was, right? Before and after. Now we need to make sure our skin is okay. No matter what we do, we need to make sure our skin is on the skin line. Go to vector scope and to turn this on, you go to here, click on here, make sure you turn on skin tone indicator, right? That's going to, this line tells us where the most human skin lies as far as color wise. And then what I do is I select over here and click my qualifier. Now I got my eyedropper and you can see that little zero oh, on the, on the vector scrub graph. Look over here. You'll see this as I scroll up across my skin. It's on the line. That's good. We're in the we're in the ballpark as far as skin. If you're not seeing this and this is not working on yours, you need to make sure that display qualifier focus is on. Make sure that is on and make sure again skin tone indicator is also on and then make sure you have the qualifier selected and then you can scroll over your skin you can scroll over anywhere and it shows you where it falls on the graph right but there our skin is looking good so this is pretty much all i would do to this guys this is it this is basically where we went from so let's go let me shut everything down Control d this is where we were at we added in our color transform right just to put it in the color space let davinci know what color space we're using and then um, I added our LUT here at the bent, at the uh, Rec 709 LUT from Aria. There it is. Then we can see the how green it is. It was a super gross, right? So we went into our white balance. We cleaned that up. And then I went into my balance just to add a little bit of contrast. Boom, there it is. And I brought the levels down just a little bit because I like a little bit more down here in the middle area. So this here, you can see we're looking good. It's a lot cleaner now. It's a little more white before it was, it had that aqua tint to it a little bit. Here's the blue from my shirt. And then if you wanted to do like a, a stylized look, you would put it in between here. Make sure everything happens before your Aria LUT. It needs to happen. It's like it happens in this world here, right? So then I can come inside of here and maybe I want to do like a teal and orange type deal, right? We'll just grab the mids and, uh, you know, push that over towards the orange a little bit and then go into my shadows and add a little bit of the teal, but not too much, kind of something like that. And then we got our, you know, little teal and orange, but I don't want that. I'm just going to leave it straight up stock clean here because this video was more informational about less of a cinematic montage, more of just informational. So hope that helps guys. Basically, if you want uh, some more videos like this, I got this other one here that I do more uh, stuff with MC Pro and grading in DaVinci Resolves. As I'm learning, I'm constantly trying different stuff and changing things. So take a look at this video. Catch you guys in the next one. Patrick Labar, keep filming. Peace.